So the Biden administration just told the Supreme Court to uphold the state of New York's concealed carry restrictions. So let's talk about this. But real quick before you jump into this video, if you think it's time for the Supreme Court to finally uphold our Second Amendment rights, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. I also want to give a shout out to one of the main supporters of the channel, and that is USCCA. Through your membership, you get training, education, and self-defense liability protection. So if you carry a firearm, I highly recommend you take a look into USCCA, and I'll put a link to them down in the detail section. Also, I want to let you know that this content is powered by the Firearms Policy Coalition. So head on over to joinfpc.org to help support the Second Amendment cause. Thank you again, Firearms Policy Coalition, for supporting this channel. So in this video, we will be discussing the New York State Rifle and Pistol Association v. Bruin case slash Corlett case. This is a case currently up for Supreme Court review, and it deals with the state of New York's concealed carry permit restrictions. Oral arguments are currently set to happen in this case on November 3rd, and essentially in reaction, the Biden administration has filed an amicus brief essentially telling the Supreme Court that they should uphold New York's restrictions on concealed carry permits. So some quick background on this case if you're not familiar with what is going on. This case is essentially a challenge to the state of New York's concealed carry permit restrictions. The state of New York requires someone to prove a proper cause standard to be issued a concealed carry permit. And in the state of New York, proper cause exists if the applicant has an actual and articulable rather than merely speculative need for self-defense. And the question presented, which the Supreme Court will consider in this case, is whether the state of New York's denial of petitioner's applications for concealed carry licenses for self-defense violated the Second Amendment. And in reaction to this case making its way up to the Supreme Court, the Biden administration has filed a brief arguing that what the state of New York is doing here is indeed constitutional. Now let's take a look at the arguments put forward by the Biden administration in their brief. To start, the Biden administration states their interest in being heard in this case is that Congress has enacted numerous laws regulating firearms. The United States has a substantial interest in defending the constitutionality of those laws. Essentially, the Biden administration says they should be heard on this issue because Congress has passed various firearms regulations and they, as the executive, must defend those statutes instead of defending the Constitution itself. Now, in this brief, the Biden administration puts forward two main arguments. And the two main arguments they put forward are, first, they argue legislators may reasonably regulate firearms to protect public safety. The second main argument they make is that they argue that the New York's licensing regime permissibly regulates the carrying of handguns. So let's take a look at each of these arguments and what they are arguing in each of these main sections. When making the first argument that the legislators may reasonably regulate firearms to protect public safety, the Biden administration argues first that history supports this claim. They state for centuries, lawmakers have protected the public by reasonably regulating such matters as who may possess arms, where they may be taken, and how they may be manufactured, transported, sold, stored, and carried. They go on to argue that pre-Second Amendment English and early American history supports these types of restrictions. They point to an early Anglo-Saxon law that says it was illegal for someone to provide a weapon to someone else when you know that that person intends to do evil. However, that law they are citing is not a restriction on a person's right to bear arms. Instead, it is an early Anglo-Saxon law that points to the fact that someone is engaging in criminal conduct if they aid someone else in engaging in criminal conduct. If you provide someone a weapon in knowing that they're going to do some sort of evil, you are also culpable for that criminal activity. That is not a restriction on someone's ability to carry a firearm. It's actually a restriction on aiding someone in criminal conduct. They then move on to colonial law and they cite a law that stated that no man do sell or give any Indian any piece, shot, or powder or any other arms offensive or defensive. However, that law hardly supports the historical basis of the New York carry restrictions. If anything, that early law points to the fact that most gun control laws that were put in place are and were inherently discriminatory and targeted minority groups. Now, after talking about early American law and Anglo-Saxon law and misciting some laws, they then move their brief on to talking about Heller, and then they use an overused argument and citation in Heller to support the state of New York's restrictions here. And the argument they make is that Scalia and Heller said that the Second Amendment is not unlimited. And they quote directly to the Heller decision. So here's that quote from Scalia and Heller. He stated, like most rights, the Second Amendment right is not unlimited. It is not a right to keep and carry 
any weapon whatsoever in any manner whatsoever and for whatever purpose. For example, concealed weapons prohibitions have been upheld under the amendment or state analogs. The court's opinion should not be taken to cast doubt on longstanding prohibitions on the possession of firearms by felons and the mentally ill or laws forbidding the carrying of firearms in sensitive places such as schools and government buildings or laws imposing conditions and qualifications on the commercial sale of arms. Now, this is a really unfortunate quote in the Heller opinion that is latched on to a lot by anti-gun advocates when they argue these types of cases and these types of firearms restrictions. This was likely a quote and language added in by Scalia to narrow the ruling of Heller to get more justices to join the opinion. However, the important piece of that sentence that I just read to you is that quote on longstanding prohibitions. This points to historical and traditional restrictions of firearms. Here, barring people from carrying firearms in public for self-defense is not a longstanding historical prohibition. Self-defense as recognized by Heller is at the core of the Second Amendment. However, the Biden administration, the state of New York and other uh, states often argue that the right to self-defense suddenly evaporates the moment you walk outside your front door. Next in the brief, the Biden administration moves on to argue that when new laws pop up like this and those laws constitutionality cannot be determined by looking at the text, history and tradition of the Second Amendment, courts then should use instead intermediate scrutiny. Often states like the state of New York and the Biden administration and all these left leaning individuals want to use intermediate scrutiny because it's an easier type of analysis to pass, essentially meaning that the courts often will side with what the government is trying to do as far as their infringements on constitutional rights. So simply to pass intermediate scrutiny, the government's action must further an important governmental interest and must do so by means that are substantially related to that interest. In this section, they then move on to talk about how various lower courts have used intermediate scrutiny when looking at two-way issues. And really this points to the larger issue that a lot of these lower courts are completely ignoring what Heller has set out as the analysis text as informed by history and tradition, instead have used intermediate scrutiny. And really this just points to the fact that it is even more important for the Supreme Court to finally address these issues because lower courts have been simply running rampant and have been upholding a lot of these very uh, big infringements on our Second Amendment rights. Finally, the Biden administration makes their second main argument that the New York's licensing regime permissibly regulates the carrying of handguns. They argue that New York has not gone as far as the jurisdictions that have flatly prohibited the carrying of arms in urban or populated areas, nor has it gone as far as those that have flatly prohibited the carrying of handguns. It has instead adopted one of the most modest of the alternatives discussed above, allowing the public carrying of handguns for self-defense, but only upon a showing of necessity. So there they're saying that we're not as bad as some of these other jurisdictions. We still give people concealed carry permits. We're not as bad, our laws aren't as bad. We just require an additional step of showing of necessity beyond self-defense. So it's unfortunate seeing our own executive office writing a brief like this to the Supreme Court, essentially telling the Supreme Court that they should uphold violations on our core constitutional right to keep and bear arms. So let me know what you guys think down the details section. Let me know what you think about this brief that the Biden administration has filed. And also if you have any questions, go ahead and comment down below and I'll try to answer the best of my ability. Also, if you like this video and like support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, and subscribe. All those things help to fuel the algorithm or fuel Al Gore's rhythm. It adds fuel to his jet and it signals to YouTube that you guys see value in these videos, in this type of two-way news, and then it helps push it to more people. So thank you so much to everybody who's liked, commented, subscribed, who's hit the notification bell. You guys are impacting this channel and you are helping this channel grow more than I ever would have thought. So thank you so much for that. And if you're a new subscriber, go ahead and comment down below that you're a new subscriber and I'll make sure I comment back to you. So as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and never forget this is with Built Barm Scholars and Station Blade Maintain Barm Scholars.